the Gorosei are yokai. Finally, we know what they turned into when they tried to kill Sabo. Now that he's shown up on Egghead Island, we got a good look at the monstrous form of one of the five elders. And it is identical to a real world Japanese monster, a yokai. Knowing that, we're able to do some deduction work. We saw all five Gorosei transform in silhouette. If we can narrow them down to yokai, we should be able to work out what creatures the other five elder stars turn into. Saint Saturn's new form is very specific. It combines two animals and lines up almost perfectly with Japanese myth. But at the same time, if you dig into the facts around this, looking into the legends a bit deeper, Saturn does something that brings up a massive problem that seems to contradict the whole yokai thing. So are they or aren't they? What else could they be? Don't worry. Plot Armor has you covered. Let's start with the guy we know, Saint J. Garcia Saturn. Japanese mythology aside, this man looks like the bad guy from Monsters, Inc. His new appearance and power set perfectly line up with the Ushioni, or Yuki. These horrific spider-like yokai have a bunch of regional myths and variations, but the combination of spider legs and ox horns is extremely telltale. What's more, Saturn literally makes people's heads explode. While in One Piece terms, this could be an extreme manifestation of Conqueror's hockey, overwhelming his opponent completely, it's also something that historically has been attributed to the Ushioni. According to a myth from the Wakayama Prefecture, if you make eye contact with the creature, you can't look away, and it will end up devouring your soul. Usually, that was supposed to be kind of subtle, but I guess Oda felt like going more dramatic with it. Simple, right? There's only one obviously weird thing so far. Why an Ushioni? Saturn's role in the world government is supposed to be warrior god of science and defense. That doesn't exactly line up with this yokai at all. Ushioni were monsters that lurked in the wilderness and were more known for cursing people with illnesses and corrupting water. So how do we make sense of this? Well, as part of a festival in Uwajima, there is a saying that children become smart if Ushioni bites their heads. There's also a tale from the Mio River Pool where a young boy was saved by an Ushioni who was then forced to leave this world as an exchange. These stories give us a weak link to science and defense, but Saturn doesn't look like the type of guy who's good with children. I mean, just look at Bonnie. It doesn't feel like enough. It would make more sense for Saturn to be a Raiju, a yokai linked to thunder and electrical power, or even a Shinkiro, a giant clam that grants visions of an impossible, fantastical city. That's even an ocean yokai, one that would be perfect for the water-covered One Piece world. But no, he is a Nushioni. Why? It's very unusual for Oda to give a character abilities that don't line up with their role or how they act. The doctor gets the operation fruit. The puppet master gets the string fruit. The metal-loving punk gets magnetism powers. The guy with the funny nose gets to be a funny-looking giraffe. Why with one of the main antagonists of the story would you give him powers that don't have anything to do with his appearance or role? It's very strange, but the design lines up so perfectly that it can't argue with it. Saturn is an Ushioni. The harder question is why? Well, there's one other odd thing about how Saturn's power manifests during this initial reveal. It gives us a way of explaining all this, but we'll get back to that later. It's less about him specifically, and more so ties into the whole Gorosei yokai concept. For now, let's take a closer look at the remaining Gorosei and see if we can work out yokai forms for them. We haven't seen these four elders do much in monstrous form just yet. Thankfully though, we do have two silhouette images from when they confronted Sabo. All we have to do is compare these shadowy Gorosei to where they were when they met Cobra. We can at least tell which shadow is which elder. Saint Marcus Mars is the easiest to identify of the remaining four elders. He's on Cobra's immediate right and has the most dramatic transformation, taking on a dragon or serpent looking form a long body, wings, and a beaked mouth. The last part looks like his well-groomed facial hair transforms with him. The crow's beak, now that we're thinking about yokai, immediately suggests that Mars might be a Tengu. These crow-like yokai are extremely famous mountain-living monks. If you've seen even just a little bit of anime, you're probably familiar with them on at least some level. We've even seen them referenced directly in One Piece already. Odin's father, Sukiyaki, wears a long-nosed mask that was designed after a Tengu. This could very well be an extension of Mars's legend connecting to Wano. As a matter of fact, let me show you guys a great example of Oda trolling us with his foreshadowing. In Chapter 793, we saw the Gorosei react to Luffy defeating Doflamingo in Dressrosa. 
what from their perspective would be the power of a god versus a god that's fallen. The cover page of that one features a Tengu laughing while pointing at Usopp, a false god. Oh, and what's the name of the chapter where Usopp gains that title? Stars. He can't keep getting away with it! Regardless, it's clear that Tengu are a no mythological creature in the One Piece world. Now, there's two sides to Tengu myths. Older stories paint them more as tricksters, manipulators who drive people mad. Later on, people started saying Tengu were good guys, protective spirits of the mountains. Pretty fitting for someone that's deceived the entire world, is treated like a gracious figure, and now resides high above them all. While we can't be totally sure what his abilities in this form might be just yet, expect him to either have some powerful illusion abilities or some kind of defenses he can use to protect his fellow Gorosei. But that doesn't totally line up with the dragon or snake-like body. Tengu are usually portrayed as closer to human proportions. Marsh's form is the most obviously inhuman of the Gorosei. Tengu are one of the most famous yokai of all time. It would be odd for Oda to make them look so radically different without a good reason. Thankfully, there are some options to explain it. In the Genpei Josuiki, a combined version of a bunch of older monastic lore and stories, the author breaks Tengu down into different types. The book distinguishes between Dai Tengu, great and powerful examples of their kind, as opposed to the more common Ko Tengu. The text doesn't really get into what physically makes them different. Since Ko Tengu are the most common, normally seen form, a dragon with a crow face would work as a way for Oda to show a more epic version of a Tengu. And if there are different types of Tengu, that could imply different devil fruit models of it, which again, could serve as a connection to Wano. Alternatively, Oda could be taking us back to the Chinese Tiango. These creatures have a variety of descriptions, but are said to resemble a shooting star, make a noise like thunder, and bring war wherever they show up. While that doesn't fit the warrior god of the environment, it could certainly fit a guy named after Mars, the Roman god of war. But perhaps this whole idea is off. The Furari Bee lines up much better with Mars' appearance if you ignore the beak. It matches a lot of dragon designs pretty well. Maybe the beak is just a twisting of his facial hair. The Ryutengu isn't actually a thing in Japanese myth, but it's a cool design. If Oda can give us Nika, a series original god, a crow dragon shouldn't be too out of the question. Saint Topman War Curry is on the far right of the group shot. Mr. Monopoly's awakened form sees his luxurious mustache turn into what looked like enormous tusks. Oda said in an interview that the Gorosei were designed with their transformations in mind. Top Man and Mars are the most immediate proof of that. While a wide variety of yokai and oni sport some kind of tusks, the size and curve of Top Man's suggests that he is a Baku. These creatures are supposed to devour nightmares and are another very well known yokai in Japan. We even have a good idea of how this myth got started. Top Man's design is the more mythological version described in books like the Sankai Ibutsu, blending other animal forms into this mixed up appearance. But pretty much all of them agree on the Baku looking kind of like a tiny elephant with a similar head, trunk, and tusks. This suggests the Baku legend comes from people having seen a Malayan tapir. The tapir is even directly called Baku in Japanese. It looks that similar to the myth. Personally, I wouldn't want to sleep anywhere near one of these things, but compared to the rest, I guess they're pretty tame. Unlike most of these creatures, Baku are mostly supposed to be helpful. Devouring nightmares made them a kind yokai, one people could ask for help. Children are supposed to be able to call out to Baku to devour their nightmares, leaving them free to enjoy a good night's sleep. Is Top Man secretly a good guy? The one nice member of the Gorosei? I mean, look at him, he's easily the least intimidating of the bunch. Mm, probably not. The power to eat dreams takes on a terrifying new context in the world of One Piece, where characters are driven by their hopes and aspirations. Even within existing myth, there are tales of Baku drinking too deeply and devouring exactly that sort of spark. This could make Baku Top Man the greatest threat of all five Gorosei, the one most invested in making sure the people of the world can never achieve their dreams. That's what keeps him fed. He might be the one Gorosei who can directly counter Gear 5. Baku Dream Eating could drain Luffy's enthusiasm. That way, he runs out of time more quickly, and Top Man ends up fighting an old man. And we know that sort of thing would be effective thanks to Perona's ghosts. We've still got two more elders to get through, though. St. Ethan Baron V. Nosjuro is the most human-looking member of this group post-transformation. He's ahead and to the left of Cobra, the third member of the Gorosei going from left to right. 
And while there's clearly something off with his new form, it's not clear at a glance how he's transformed. Sure, there are some yokai who look pretty close to a regular human. For example, some are even extremely powerful, legendary individuals like Otake Maru. But it's a bit unlikely that that's what our boy Ethan turned into. The one example we have for sure, Saturn, is a simple Yuki, far less powerful and impressive. All we've seen from the Gorosei so far suggests that they're roughly equal in power level. The more individual yokai are closer to gods and significantly stronger. If we accept that the Gorosei are imbalanced, we could play around a bit more. Saying top man could be Shuten Doji, Mars could be Sutoku. But for now, let's stick with the idea that they're all common yokai, more widespread than the one off legends. Where would that leave Nujuro? Well, he's at least able to stand on two feet, but something's clearly up with him. Putting these things together, what if he's an Imori, a warrior gecko? Normally, they're supposed to be the same size as regular geckos, but that kind of concept is fun enough that Oda would absolutely consider changing it. Maybe changing his size would be a part of his power set. And you know what? That would be yet another Monsters Inc. villain. Nujuro has been seen carrying a very impressive looking sword. A form that would actually let him use it makes sense. A final fight against Zoro might end up looking like a Geico commercial. But Nujuro may not be fighting alone. Myths of the Imori talked about there being a lot of them. Each one being a reincarnated warrior. Zoro might have to confront an entire army of tiny swordsmen. Finally, we have the more unassuming Saint Shepherd Jupiter. Peter. He's on Saturn's left, and there's something odd about his transformation. He's not actually visible in the first group shot. For some reason, he vanishes for a second while the Gorosei transform. It's easy to get a bit confused since we're expecting five elders and there are five pairs of eyes glaring at Sabo. But if you think about it, it's pretty clear the gigantic thing at the back is Imu. They're using their hands to pull themselves down from the empty throne, and we see a six figure behind the group later. That makes Peter this gigantic headed creature with an enormous mouth. He could literally become a giant disembodied head, and Otake Maru or a Surube Otoshi would fit. But that doesn't quite match up with the art. While the head is in focus, there's clearly some kind of body underneath it. He could be a variant of the Kuchisake Ona or Slit Mouth Woman. He's even got a prominent scar on his chest in human form. But instead, I'm thinking he's a Hanzaki, a gigantic salamander yokai. Think of Hanzo summoning Ibuse from Naruto. That's why he's not there in the first group shot. He fell to the ground, and it took him a second to get back on his feet. The Hanzaki are supposed to be able to grow to gigantic size, so the massive head we see here could just be at the top of a huge, long body reaching behind him. Expect Jupiter's fighting style to focus around trying to consume his foes. Hanzaki were famous for swallowing enemies whole. He could give mouthful mode Luffy a run for his money. But now, we need to change course. We've gone over the five elders and their possible yokai forms. It sure looks like they're yokai. But it's time to point out the flaw with this whole idea. Do you remember that magic circle? The one that Saint Saturn used to teleport to Egghead? Yeah, that's not a thing in Japanese mysticism. And I don't mean, oh, it doesn't look right. The whole concept of a summoning circle has nothing to do with yokai. People summoning spirits does happen, but not any random yokai. And not like this. On Miyoji, trained mystics are supposed to be able to summon Shikigami. These are minor gods, ghosts, and assistants. There's no easy direct translation. The most skilled mystics can summon Shikiyoji, a stronger and more dangerous variant, but the power level isn't the point. These spirits are made alive by the ritual. They're more like robots created by the summoner and given firm instructions on what to do. The Shiki Kanji that both these summoned creatures have literally translates as formula. That's very different from yokai, free willed creatures that are already part of the world. On Miyoji might be able to ward against them with Ofuda, those little paper charms you may have seen in other anime. But that's very different from summoning them. There isn't really a precedent for yokai working like this. It also wasn't something the Gorosei needed before this. Back when they confronted Sabo in the Holy Land, they just transformed freely into their other forms. So, is all this wrong? Are they not using yokai devil fruits? Maybe Oda just took yokai myth as a baseline and is going in another direction. Well, we can jump to Western mysticism and start looking at that. With those massive horns, Saturn certainly looks the part of a judo Christian demon. Summoning circles are much more rooted in Western occultism as a way to call on demons. 
We could go in on this. There's five fallen angels who were with Satan at the beginning of Paradise Lost for a start. There are 72 demons noted in the Arsh Gosha. It would be easy to find someone that fits each elder. And hey, there's reason to think that One Piece might legitimately be moving in this direction. Film Red gave us Top Musica, a very literal demon king, not just a guy who ate a devil fruit. Now that the Lunarians have been introduced, we even have a race of angel-like beings from ancient history. The Gorosei can be something other than regular humans. But hold on, we've seen Saint Saturn's form. He's absolutely a Gyuki, spider plus ox horns, kills people who looks at him. Maybe he ate a devil fruit. Maybe he's a supernatural creature. He should be a yokai either way. Most of the other Gorosei designs are at least close to some known yokai. They should be yokai. But they have this whole summoning routine that has nothing to do with yokai. See what I mean about this being confusing? Maybe Oda just felt a summoning circle would be a cool thing to give the Gorosei, mixing the two mythologies a bit. It wouldn't be the first time Japanese media has worked in some Western occultism. That's basically Shin Megami Tensei's entire brand. That's usually done by mixing up Western demons with Oni, though. It's rare to see yokai treated like they're this malevolent. They're spirits, sure, but they're spirits of this world. The whole idea of a summoning circle is bringing in a creature from some other place. Like, well, hell. Using one on a yokai is kind of weird. Still, there's another option here. While it's not used for summoning, the five-pointed star is an actual symbol used in Japanese mysticism. In fact, it was the personal mon, the signature of Abe no Seme, Japan's most legendary real-life magician. Given Seme's past of serving the imperial court in his day, we shouldn't be too surprised to see it being used by servants of Imu, the unseen emperor of the world. The context, however, is very different from the pentagram's use in Western occultism. Here, the five-pointed star is used to show an idea rooted in Chinese thought, Wuxing, the system of elemental essence interaction. Each point on the star represents one element, with the line showing how each element flows into two others. It's like a cycle, with the energy passing through all five points in time. This gives us something to work with. The five elders corresponding to the five elements of Wuxing would fit. They're what make the world government work, each overseeing one aspect of its operations. Linking them to the Wuxing cycle ties each of the Gorosei's monster forms to one element. Metal, wood, earth, water, and fire. That would explain why their yokai bodies don't have anything to do with their jobs. The yokai ties to the element, and that ties to their role. Instead of summoning Jay Garcia, the circle might be there to empower him, providing some kind of link to Mary Joa and his fellow elders. But no, that doesn't quite fit with what we saw. The Marines treated this as a summoning circle, broadcasting that Saturn is now only able to make landfall on Egghead. Sanji sees him emerge from the circle directly. Well, let's leave that idea for now. That's not the only option here. And the second option gives us a crazy insight into what could be the Gorosei's history. Remember, the pentagram was the mon of Abe no Seime. There's a lot of mythology around the guy. The Abe family ended up basically running the Bureau of Onmyo, a whole government department of professional mystics. Seime had a band of Shikigami that were supposed to have been his personal bodyguards. These were the 12 Heavenly Commanders. These spirits have some serious power to them. They're often conflated with Buddhism's 12 divine generals, where it's said that they were the personal bodyguards of Yakushi Buddha, Basaji Yagaru, medicine master, and king of lapis lazuli light, a bunch of spirits who can be summoned and act as personal attendants of a godlike figure. Hey, fun fact, did you know that for a while, there was a group of scientists who claimed there were 12 planets in our solar system? They were pushing for a slightly broader definition of a planet that would bring the count up that high. With Oda already talking about the weight of the soul idea, we're already looking at some kind of weird alternate science stuff in One Piece. A different version of the planetary system would fit right in. It doesn't line up with the Ohara Planetarium, which has a sun, two moons, and six planets, but these scholars hadn't finished their research. Perhaps they were only just starting to get close to the truth. Five elder planets and seven who aren't around anymore. Yeah, think back to when we've seen the five elders. Pretty much any time we've met them, the room hasn't been built for just five people. They don't even get to share a desk they can all sit around. They've had to pull out a bunch of furniture to lounge around on and are always a chair short. It's pretty odd for the guys who are supposed to basically run the world. 
Even if they ultimately answer to Imu, why don't they have some kind of personal office where they can all get a spot at the table? There's a lot of empty space around them too. It's not obvious. We usually get close-up shots of the five, but this place is kind of massive. Almost like it was built with the idea that way more people were supposed to be here. You could argue that this is a world noble opulence thing, but that doesn't exactly fit. We've seen other parts of Mary Joa during the reverie, and this isn't normal. Plus, the five elders don't bother with other world noble trappings like those fishbowl suits. They're not that kind of arrogant. And look at the chamber of the empty throne specifically. There's nothing in this room for the Gorosei. They have the world government's five point symbol. Sure, that might be referring to them. But there's nothing else. We know the Gorosei take meetings in this chamber, and they all just sort of stand around awkwardly near the door. Even if Imu's secretly in charge, so they have to leave the empty throne clear, wouldn't you expect the fake rulers to at least get a spot to sit down? Well, what if there were originally over twice as many of them? That would explain why all the rooms in Mary Joa were designed for a much larger group. All those massive fancy conference chambers were built for a council of 12. But now, the ones that are left don't want to be reminded of what they've lost. So they took the desk out, got a few comfy chairs, and a coffee table like they're your mom bringing a few friends over. That's it. You could easily fit 12 smaller thrones beneath the empty throne. There's even a layer for that right above the 20 weapons. We've never seen anyone stand in that bit of the chamber. All the business stuff takes place pretty much in front of the door. Was that where the Gorosei were originally supposed to sit? Right beneath Imu, their direct agents. So who are the 12? The Shikigami version of the list gives us Toda, Suzaku, Rikugo, Kochin, Seiryu, Kijin, Tenko, Dion, Genbu, Taijo, Byako, and Tenku. Unfortunately, the debate about how closely Seimei's spirits could be linked to Buddhism makes it hard to gather information on them. This is a bit of a deep cut. There's not a lot of scholarship on this subject in English, and most of it just assumes the Heavenly Commanders and Divine Generals are the same guys. Several of them, though, are tied to Chinese constellations, sharing a name with them. This actually could explain some of the weirder Gorosei monster form designs. Take Marcus Mars, for example. The Toda is connected to the Tenshi constellation, a flying serpent, but with a name that seemingly includes the Teng of Tengu. Thus, you get a flying serpent with a crow's beak. If you want to represent the 12 as unique spiritual monsters, using design elements and bits of other yokai would, wait a minute, 12 planets or stars, 12 spirits, Luffy plans to ultimately have 12 straw hat pirates, himself, and 11 crewmates. That number just felt right to Luffy, who had already eaten the Gomu Gomu by that point, or as we now know, the Nika fruit. Were the original 12 spirits another pirate crew? The Star Pirates? Did they know Nika? Hmm, interesting, but not enough proof just yet. Theory for another time, perhaps. Ultimately, an alternative and perhaps far similar take would be that the Summoning Circle thing isn't a Devil Fruit ability. As we've seen across multiple examples, the Gorosei do not age. One Piece is chock full of different races. The Gorosei do not consider themselves human, and at this point, I doubt that's simply their inflated egos talking. This could be an exclusive race ability or technique. Even if the 12 commanders are separate from the 5 elders, they may instead connect to the Holy Knights. If you guys have any ideas of your own, drop them in the comments so we can all speculate together. As always, I'm Slice Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.